you got any diaphragms here, we re actually replaced them. Um, half inch wrench, basically boxed in, opened in. Uh, a ratchet, three quarter socket, which is going to be for your diaphragm bolt inside once you take the top head off. And then you're going to use an impact with a half inch socket. That's basically going to take all your manifold bolts off and all your head bolts off to break it loose. And then you're going to put it all back together, same thing. So you may need a screwdriver sometimes, flathead. If for some reason one of these pistons don't want to slide out the sleeves, you may run into that problem. That's just a trick you may need to do. But other than that, those are your basic tools that you will need to do a diaphragm repair kit on a P40. So today I'm going to show you how to repair a Comet pump. It's actually a P40. And what we're going to do today is we're going to replace the diaphragms. You have three, basically on one on top, two on the sides. So to get started, you're actually going to have to take off your regulator, which is located in front, and it actually has four screws in it. So once you take that off, it's going to allow you to get to these head bolts on the sides. So what we're going to do with an impact is you're going to need a half inch impact socket or even a pneumatic gun, whatever air tools. You can even use a regular ratchet. If you, if you don't have an impact, impact kind of goes a little bit faster. So what I want to do is I just want to show you if, you're, if the first time you're doing it, to make it easier on you, being that your suction on this side, your bypass is on this side, if you, you, you don't want to mix them up and get it rotated wrong, I went ahead and labeled each side. So I put a one on the one, I put a two on the two on this side, and I put a three and a three on this side. So when I take this off, I know exactly how I'm gonna put it back on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening these bolts. Now I've loosened these center bolts. These here you're not going to get a, a socket on so you're actually going to have to get it started with a wrench just to get it out a little bit to where you can get a socket on it. So that's going to be a trick on getting that off. And you have to take this front manifold off in order to get the heads off to get to the valves. So if you're running into a problem and you're wondering why you're not going to get the tops off, it's because this top, this side piece actually has to come off completely. Now there's one thing you need to know when you're taking off this front assembly. Once I pull this off, I'm going to show you that the, these two, the four of these, are all going to be different lengths of bolts. So you don't want to mix them up when you go to put it back together. So once you get all of them off, usually the trick of it is, is when you pull it out, you just want to lay it flat. So I usually just lay it flat down so you know that's the way you took it off, that's the way you're going to put it back on. Now the center ones are the shorter bolts. If you notice these outside bolts are longer. So you don't want to mix them up when you go back and put this together. So ideally you want to keep everything basically the way you took it off is the way you're going to want to put it back on. So. With that being said, you have these sleeves in here. They're going to fall out. They basically hold the valve in place. You notice you have one that's gray, and then you have a stainless steel one. You don't want to mix them up because then the head's not going to want to go back on there. 
when you go to put it back on. So they will fall out once you take the head assembly off, which is no big deal. You can still put them back in. Now, if you feel that you don't know which way it is, it's going to go back in, take a picture of it or label it so you know that, you know, I have plastic on this side and I have a steel uh, bushing on this side. So what I'm going to do first, trick of that is you're going to have to take the cap off the side glass just to get this top head off because if not, it'll hit the lid. So we're going to go ahead and take that off with a half inch socket. So this first one here, I'm just going to set to the side. I've already labeled it so I know exactly where that one's going. So here you have your diaphragm bolt, you have your diaphragm washer, and then there's your diaphragm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and loosen that with a three-quarter socket. And you can use a power tool on it taking it off, but when you go to put this back on, you want to use a regular ratchet. Because if you over tighten this bolt, it'll strip inside that piston, and basically you're looking at a whole different repair. So there's your diaphragm there. Normally it'll be cracked. If you see any kind of tears in them, then you know it's actually worn. So then we do want to replace that. So what we want to do now is we want to pull this sleeve out. That's basically holding the piston in place. Normally you could take the diaphragm bolt and tighten it down a little bit. And then you can just wiggle that piston out. So that's basically holding this piston in place. There's a ring around this piston. So when you go to take it off, if you kind of struggle getting this out, it's going to be because of that snap ring in there around that piston is actually holding on to this. So there's a few tricks to wiggling that out. But once you get that out, the easiest way of draining this oil, now that you've got the top head assembly off, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and empty this oil out. You can use an oil pan, drain pan, any kind of pan you got just to get all the oil out of it. And this is probably going to be the simplest way to doing it. Now, if, if you're having problems with it, you can take another head off. For some reason, you can't get the top piston out, which you, you may run into a problem like that sometimes. But most of the time, you won't. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and start on the other side. I'm going to go to the other side.
sometimes they'll stick on you, so I usually try to use a screwdriver to get them inside, and you can just pop it right out. And we're going to pop this last piston sleeve out. Now that I've got my piston sleeves out and my diaphragms off, we're going to want to clean the inside of this pump from any metal residue from the old oil. If a diaphragm ruptures, most of the time when the water mixes with this oil, it's got actually got a chemical in it that will actually make the oil turn a different color. And you'll see that inside the sight glass, and then you'll know actually that you did blow a diaphragm. So we want to get all that sludge out of there. I usually use just regular brake fluid. It evaporates everything pretty quick. It cleans everything out, so you're not having to worry about leaving any debris in there. Or any, if there's any reason any metal shavings are in there, it'll get everything out of there and clean. Plus, it dries a lot faster. You're not really having to wait on it. Well, once we get everything cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and start inserting everything back together as the sleeves go back in. So the trick, easiest way of the trick is to start on the, bo the bottom sides because they're easier to actually put on without running any problems so what we're going to go ahead and do is i'm going to slide this sleeve right back over the piston and you may have a hard time with that piston ring on there so you'll have to play with it a little bit but once you get it in there it's going to sit flush just like that okay here are my diaphragms, and there's three of them. So the three you took out, three you're going to replace. It's critical on these diaphragms that you put them in the same way you took them out, and what it is is they label it. So on one side it's going to say water, the other side is going to say oil. The oil side is going to actually go toward the pump itself. So your water is running through the chambers out here. And this is going to seal the oil from coming out to meet the water. Your diaphragm bolt and the washer, if you notice, it's beveled. So the bevel side is actually going to go down. So you want to make sure that sits. If it's opposite, what's going to happen is in time, that's going to cut into that. So it'll rupture the diaphragm. So then you're going to run back in the same problem having to redo it. So we want to make sure we put them back in the same way. Usually what I like to do is just slide it through the diaphragm so I know it's already in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and reapply my bolt back on there. Once you get that installed, we're going to go ahead and put our head back on. And this side was number three. So right now what I'm doing is just making sure that that's flush, sealed on there. I'm going to go ahead and put my head back on.
we're going to do the same process on the other side. Get our sleeve back in. And again, you may have a little trouble getting them in there, but once you get it over that snap ring, you should be fine. Now I'm going to find my oil and my water side. That's my water side. So I'm going to go back, same step as we did the first time. Bolter. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with my number two side. Now that I got them two sides on, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and use our, put our oil in, which is a non-detergent, 30 weight, and with that being said, detergent oil that you put in a regular car will actually foam up in this. This doesn't have that additive in it, so it won't foam at all. So this is the pump oil that we want to use when replacing your oil back into your pump. And what I want to do is I just want to fill it up almost to the top of the brim here, which is going to make it easier than you actually pouring it through the side glass. Once I get it, where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and put my third piston sleeve back in there. So it slides flush. Now I'm going to put my other diaphragm in. I'm going to find your water side and your oil side. But your water side is always going to go out. So now we're going to install our last head. Those may fall out, like I said, but that's no big deal. We can put them back in. So we're done assembling all this. Now that we've got that all back together, I want to take the rest of my oil and I'm just going to fill up my glass to about halfway. Basically that's going to reassure you that you actually have all the oil you need in there. You can tilt it back a little bit and it'll actually cause it to go down more. But it'll take this whole entire quart, so don't be afraid to use it all. If for some reason you think it's not going to take it all, then that's fine too, you'll just have a little bit extra. So now that that's that, you're going to go ahead and put your cap back on there. And that will lock in, it's got a flange on it that will lock it in place. So now we're just going to go ahead and put back our manifold on the front. So I'm going to reinstall my spacers 
which is your vial for your O-ring. That in place. Get that in place. Get your stainless steel. And if you notice on these bushings here, they have a beveled end on one side. So that's actually going to go in instead of out. So you want to make sure when you put it back together, it's all going to be the same way you took it apart. We're going to apply our O-ring back in there. Like so. We're going back. I want to go ahead and put this assembly back together. So I just line everything back up the way I took it off. All my numbers are matching, so I know I'm on those. All my sides are the same way I took it off. And these don't need to be super tight. They just need to be pretty snug. If you over tighten them, you could mess the threads up inside. So we're just going to work around it. Trying to get everything lined up. you get everything back together, diaphragms are in, your oil's in, then you can go ahead and reinstall your regulator and connect all your lines back. And then